Hello guys, this is Kapil from HS Academy and welcome to another informative video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about AFP and PFP. I hope all have heard these names, Active Fire Protection and Passive Fire Protection. These are the very basic concept of fire protection actually. Okay, so let's discuss about them. What is that and actually how they are helping the fire protection industry to make it more reliable and good. Okay, but guys before starting this topic, actually one small misconception is there between these professionals, our professionals. Okay, actually some professionals are calling AFP and PFP as active fire prevention and passive fire prevention. What is that? Active fire prevention and passive fire prevention. But in actual, it is not like that. They are basically active fire protection and passive fire protection. Okay, so now we need to understand here the difference. What is the difference between prevention and protection? What is that? Prevention and protection. Okay, now guys, prevention means any sort of control measures, any sort of control measures or any sort of practices that will stop the initiation, the starting of the fire that will be called as prevention. Okay, so at the time we will call them FPP, fire prevention practices. These are different. They will stop the initiation of the fire. Fire will not start if we are following FPP. But in our case, these two are protection. They are not prevention. Okay, if you use these two, fire will start but they will extinguish the fire, they will deal with the fire in a very different way. Okay, so I hope this doubt is clear. They are active fire protection and passive fire protection, not active fire prevention and passive fire prevention. I hope it's clear to you. Now let's go individually into these two concepts and understood why these are very important. What is the meaning of them? Okay, so first of all, let's go to the active fire protection. Okay, guys, first is active fire protection. What is that? Active fire protection. So guys, active fire protection is a combination combination of equipments systems and methods which is used to extinguish the fire once the fire is initiated for example equipment means what any sort of fire extinguisher we can utilize that now fire buckets these are all the equipments which is being utilized to extinguish the fire once the fire has started systems means what now we are dealing with the more complex systems like hydrant systems sprinkler systems high spray gas systems, deluge valve system. These, these are the system which is used to deal with the fire once the fire is started. Okay, they will never prevent the initiation of the fire. Okay, but once the fire is started, they will deal with them. Okay, and third is methods. Now, what is the meaning of method? Methods means how to operate these systems because some of these systems are automatic, some they are manual. Okay, so at the time we should have proper methods. If methods is not there, how we are going to deal them? How we are going to operate them? If we will not operate them properly, fire will not extinguish okay so basically active fire protection is a combination of all these three so the purpose of active fire protection is simple once the fire is started okay once the fire is started they will extinguish them in the minimum duration of the time okay that is the complete meaning of active fire protection one more thing guys that i want to clear with you now you will tell me what is the what about the fire protection uh, fire prevention actually initially i told you fire prevention practices so nowadays previously there was approaches like separate the three elements of the fire triangle then the fire pre prevention practices will be okay it will be established but now it is not like that we have a lot of complex systems within the fire protection industry that are claiming that and proving that they can be used in the fpp like you can tell inert gas system if you are basically installing inert gas system in the room where all the electrical equipments are available so they will reduce they will reduce the oxygen level from that particular place so fire will not start so it is one of the example of fire prevention practices so fpp is totally different from active fire protection and passive fire protection one day we will discuss separately fpp i will make i will develop a se develop separate video on fpp fire prevention practices and its current trends Okay, now I hope you understood what is the meaning of active fire protection. So any sort of systems, any fire protection systems which is being used to deal with the fire, they will come under AFP. Okay, so now let's go to the second one that is your passive fire protection. Third one, that is your passive fire protection. What is that? Passive fire protection PFP. So now when we talk about the passive fire protection, generally people will tell any control measures which will reduce the fire spread. That is called passive fire protection. But in actual, the meaning of passive fire protection is very very diverse now i will explain you okay guys passive fire protection means any sort of claddings or any sort of coatings okay generally you people are purchasing any fire resistant paint no fire resistant coatings and paints for your home construction why because basically the purpose of pfp is to reduce ros what is that ros rate of spread of the fire any sort of products of combustion which is being released from that fire 
that is the purpose of that generally when we are selecting any passive fire protection material we need to focus on three major things first of all integrity second is stability and third is insulation okay so let me tell you what is the meaning of integrity integrity in the sense if we are using any sort of passive fire protection material for example any sort of door any sort of uh, you can say wall any material which is being categorized as passive fire protection okay it should prevent the transmission of flames and smoke okay which is very dangerous as we know that so flames and smoke should not transfer from one area where the fire had have occurred to the another area which is being protected okay so it should prevent the transmission of these two clear second is stability what is that stability stability in the sense if you are using any sort of passive fire protection then it should withstand it should have reliability it doesn't means that if fire occurs means it will collapse for example this is one of the door which you are using in the fire okay if it is exposed to the fire it will collapse so it should not be done if we are using any sort of passive fire protection like wall and doors then it should withstand with the fire okay it should have a withstanding capacity with the fire so that is the meaning of stability and third is insulation insulation in the sense it should prevent the heat transmission okay because if heat is transferred by conduction or radiation then other side which is being protected it can also catch a fire because of heat transmission so majorly the passive fire protection is being used to focus three major things integrity uh, second is stability and third is insulation so generally previously i made some videos i have developed some videos with regards to fire testing fire modeling so that is the reason why we are using fire testing because whatever the material that you are seeing in the market for the passive fire protection it is first of all being tested in the laboratories of nist and different fire testing companies after its performance is good then only it is taken to the market for the public and commercial use okay so that is the meaning of passive fire protection all the control measures that is used to reduce the spread of fire flames smoke heat that will be called as passive fire protection okay guys i hope it's clear to you passive fire protection okay generally for the passive fire protection there is a range of products sometimes we are using coatings sometimes any sort of mattresses sometimes any sort of curtains some some type any sort of construction material it has a very long range actually the portfolio of the passive fire protection is very very big so we'll discuss that also on one separate webinar with regards to pfp okay so guys this was the explanation of active fire protection passive fire protection and fpp fire prevention practices i hope it's clear to you and now you will not repeat the same mistake so till now if you find any sort of difficulty any sort of doubt with regards to these explanation you can put your comment in the comment section i'll give you the answer as soon as possible as well as if you have any sort of suggestions any sort of recommendation for the upcoming future videos you can put them in the comment section so this was the end of this video kindly share this video with your friends or the fire and safety professionals those who are working in the field so meet you in the next video till then take care guys